Hey everybody, I'm Chef Tom with ATBBQ.com and this is Bananas Foster Creme Brulee. Well, it's that time again, it's dessert time. And today we're cooking a really fun spin on a classic. It's Bananas Foster Creme Brulee. So we're gonna take all those wonderful flavors from Bananas Foster, the bananas, the sweetness, the cinnamon, the rum, and infuse it into our custard for our creme brulee, then bake it on the grill. And of course, we'll finish it off with that classic brulee topping. So let's go ahead and get started on the Bananas Foster portion of the cook. So I wanna start off with about four cups of diced bananas. Rough chop is fine. It's really not gonna matter in the end because this is all gonna get mashed up and then end up steeping in our heavy cream here in a little bit. Now we're gonna try to get some caramelization going on our bananas. So first thing we're gonna do is throw down about three tablespoons of unsalted butter. and Let that melt in our skillet. Get that butter fully melted and starting to brown just a little bit. Now we're gonna add our bananas. At the same time, we're also going to add our sugar. We're using our smoked maple turbinado sugar. We get about three tablespoons of that stuff. We get some caramelization going here. We're also gonna add a quarter teaspoon of cinnamon. And let's let this all kind of get to know one another here in the skillet. Get a little color going on the bottom. And we'll finish this off with our rum once we start to see some color. I'm keeping the heat up pretty high on here so that we can get some of this caramelization that I was talking about on the underside. We don't want to go too dark, but that right there is about perfect. This is a tricky thing, right? Because it's a soft fruit, uh, but the, the surface will caramelize, especially with the help of that sugar in there. And that's what we're looking for, because that sugar and that caramelization that's happening in that sugar, that's what creates all this extra like depth of flavor. So now that we've got some really great caramelization going on, I'm gonna shut off the heat here. I'm gonna add in a half cup of dark rum. Kinda of deglaze the pan with that rum. And then the alcohol is gonna cook off this rum so you guys don't have to worry. You can serve this to the kids. It's, it's not gonna hurt them. Uh, especially if you go ahead and light it up. A little bit of, ooh, feel that flame. It's a tiny bit now. But as long as there's no more flame left when you hit it with a little fire, then that alcohol is burned off. Now that unappetizing looking mess of deliciousness is gonna go into our heavy cream to steep and make all those flavors come together. So the heat is back on now. We're gonna add one quart of heavy whipping cream. Then I'm gonna add to that a half teaspoon of vanilla paste. This stuff kind of lives somewhere in between like actual vanilla beans and your vanilla extract. So you get the little black seeds in there, but it's still not the purest vanilla. You certainly could go ahead and spend the money on a vanilla bean, scrape the seeds out of the pod and throw it all in here. It'd be wonderful. But unfortunately right now that's gonna cost you an extra $10 probably. So medium high heat here. We don't want this to come all the way up to a simmer. We're gonna stop it right before that. So I want this banana flavor to steep into this cream at least, you know, for the time that it takes us to put together our egg yolks and sugar, because we still want this cream to be hot when it goes, gets tempered into the eggs. But we'll just let it sit here now, cover it up, stay warm, infuse those flavors. Now I'm gonna separate out 10 yolks for our custard. The whites you can either save for your egg white omelets or meringue or pitch them in the trash, whatever you feel like doing. Don't throw them away. At least put them in the fridge for a week before you decide to throw them away. <laughs> now we're gonna add three quarter cup white sugar to our egg yolks and whip this until it's smooth and lightened in color. You start to see those granules of sugar dissolving. And like I said, it starts to become much more pale yellow. So now we're ready to strain off our cream mixture. Just run it through uh, any sort of a sieve that you have, strainer, mesh. Start working all that liquid through. 
We're going to come up a little short of a court uh, in the end here, which makes sense. We're going to lose some of that in this process. I know you can't smell it, but the smell's incredible. Cinnamon, banana, goodness right now. You can see how that cream has taken on those colors, though. Indication of that flavor being infused into the cream. And I'll really work this until I can't get any more liquid to come through there. Now, our cream's not super hot but still warm enough that we're gonna temper this in just a little bit at a time so we don't cook our egg yolks and have chunky creme brulee. And if you really wanted to go nuts about this, you would strain it one more time after this to get any lumps out. But you've gotta really want it to be silky smooth. And I'm not terribly concerned about it so we're just gonna work all of this mixture in here, give it a good whisk until it looks smooth. And this will be ready to go into the ramekins. So we're gonna divide our custard now between six ramekins. Fill them most of the way up and then come back and top them off. If we have extra. Make sure you find yourself a really nice flat sheet pan for this so that Nothing is uneven. I mean, it's not a huge deal, honestly, if it's like a little bit fuller at one side than the other, but you know, if we're being picky, I'd like a nice flat sheet pan here. All right, let's head over to the grill. But today we're cooking on the Yoder Smokers YS640S pellet grill. It's running at 325 degrees with hickory pellets. Now we're set up for full indirect cooking and we're gonna bake our creme brulee right here on the second shelf. Now our damper is pushed in about six inches, which is gonna keep everything heat-wise really even. Uh, we want a very even heat to the point where we're even gonna add some water to our pan here. This will both keep the environment nice and moist, but also help keep our creme brulee cooking evenly. So. This should take about 45 minutes, which means I'm gonna set a timer for about 22 minutes to give it a spin. So we're about 50 minutes in now. I've been checking the temperature for the last 10 minutes or so. And we are aiming for a finishing temperature of about 165 to 170. Now the thing about that is we are creeping up on 165 right now, but if you check this out, like it's got jiggle, but it almost looks a little bit liquid in the middle. And that's why I'm using the thermometer because I love the texture that you get out of this creme brulee when you pull it at 165 to 170, even though it may look like it's still just a little bit under. The finished product is going to be dead on. So we're going to pull these off now, take them out of the water bath and chill them completely. Now these need a minimum of four hours to chill down before they're ready to serve. But honestly, my best recommendation for you is cook them the day before you need them, throw them in the fridge overnight so that they're ready to go for whatever occasion you have the following day. But once these are fully set, we can finish them off for service. And you always wanna do this part right before you serve it. We're gonna hit the top with some more of our turbinado sugar. And actually, before I get this fully covered, we're gonna garnish with just one slice of banana on top. Get the surface of that kind of covered with the turbinado sugar. Make sure that's fairly even. And then we're going to use the torch to crisp. So just keep kind of moving. Lower torch is a little bit safer. You won't burn anything too quickly. Keep it moving. As it melts, it wants to start rolling around. Oh, that looks really nice. See that bubble? That's what we're looking for. If you're getting a little too intense, back it off. Right on top of that banana there. And we're gonna form this crunchy layer of sugar 
right on top of our custard. All right, let's crack into it. Oh, look at that. Creamy goodness. See a little banana on there too. Mmm. Wow. Sweet, creamy goodness. Fully catching all that banana. Little bit of cinnamon. But man, that brulee. That smoked sugar hit with the flame creates such a wonderful crust on top of this super creamy custard. The flavors are all there. The texture is dead on. Use that digital thermometer. Check your temperature. That 165 to 170 range of doneness, it may look a little loose on the grill still, but you get this beautiful creamy texture in the end once it's all set up. That's some good stuff. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Be sure to check out atbbq.com for all the products featured in today's video. If you enjoy the recipe, hit that subscribe button. And if you have any questions or comments or there's anything you'd like to see me cook, let me know in the comment section down below and let's be good to one another. For more recipes, tips, and techniques, head over to atbbq.com slash the sauce. All things barbecue, where barbecue legends are made. <laughs>